Okay, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we went ahead and we went. And what we did is we installed the image files onto both the SD card and our um, hard drive. Um, let me go ahead and clear this out. And what I want to do is I want to actually show that to you. I've still got my hard drive um, connected um, to my computer, and we're still working in the hard drive. But if you are um, wanting to uh, do this next section, you're only going to use your, your SD card. Um, it, this will work the same exact way. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to open up Gparted again. KDESU is what I have to use because I use the KDE. Um, again, I use the KDE desktop environment. If you're using, again, if you're using something else, you can probably get away with just using sudo. But I'm going to open Gparted. Put in my password. And here's Gparted. Okay. Now, with Gparted, we're going to go down and we're going to check out my hard drive. Remember, it was a 250 gig hard drive. It was on a dev SDC. We're going to go over here. Now, if you are using your SD card, it should look exactly the same. Now, this will probably, obviously, not be as big, but you should have, you know, if you've used something bigger than 2 gigabytes, then you're going to have some unallocated space. Okay? So, you're going to do pretty much the same thing that we're doing here. The only difference is I'm doing it on a hard, uh, on my hard drive. You're doing it on your SD card, but it's, it's the same process. All right? The first thing I want to do is I want to point out to you right here, right here, this partition, SDC5, for me, SDC5, but this partition right here is only 1.66 gigabytes large. That is the Arch Linux um, operating system. Um, this is where it's at. Now, again, I, I mentioned this in the, in the previous video, that is really small. And if you're going to be installing programs, man, there's not a lot of room to put anything on there. Um, one, of the, one of the other things that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a swap file. I will do that here also. Um, but for now, let's, let's, start, let's start off with this extended, um, or this, this partition. Now, we want to extend this partition, right, because that's where the, where the operating system is. We want to make that bigger so we have room to, to install programs and whatnot on it. Uh, but in order to do this, see, this partition is actually contained within the extended partition, okay? You can think of the extended partition as kind of like a shell, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to extend this out. Um, I'm going to select it and then go up here to resize. Then I'm going to drag this all the way out. This is how I, this is how I want to do it, okay? I'm going to drag it all the way out. And what that will do is that will give you a new size, basically your new tentative size with your setting. Now, I, what I want to do is I also want to leave enough room at the end of my drive, this is personal preference, it it's also seems to be easier this way, I want to leave enough room at the end of my drive for a swap partition, okay? And if you don't know what a swap partition is, that, that essentially functions as virtual RAM. And with the Pi only having, mine only has 512 megas, megabytes of RAM, you know, a, a swap partition is going to come in very, very handy. It's something that you should have. Um, I recommend definitely doing this. So what I want to do is I want, how much, how much space do I want to leave? I want to leave 2 gigs, which is 2048. Oops. There you go. 2048 is 2 gigs, right? So if you click off of it like I did, you actually saw that this shifted a little bit. Okay, that's the free space following this partition. So I'm going to go ahead and click resize and move. Now you'll see that it changed the size of the of the. It now says un unallocated, but the extended partition is now instead of 1.66 like it was before, it is now 230 gigabytes, which means we now have room to move this out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to move that out. Now, how big do I really want it to be? Well, okay. Um, I think what I want to do is I want it to be 50 gigabytes. Okay, um, or I'm going to say close to 50 gigabytes because I really don't want to do the math right now to figure out what that is. Because 
however you do it, it's 1024 times however many gigabytes, and that'll give you how many megabytes. Um, but in any case, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 50,000, because I know that'll be close. Um, it's not going to be exactly 50 gigabytes. It'll probably be, that's, I think that's close to like 48 gigabytes or something right around there. But I think that's plenty big enough for my operating system. That's, that's me. You can, you can choose to put, make that size however big you want it. If you want to go 100 gig, you can do that, whatever. You know, you just decide how big you want it to be. So I'm going to click, I'm going to go ahead and click re, uh, resize and move. And you'll notice that there it is. Yeah, 48.83. So it's, clo it's actually closer to 49 gigabytes. So that is the new size of my operating um, system partition. But now you look down through here and you have a couple spots where it's unallocated. Well, what I want to do is I want to create a separate partition for my home directory. And I'm going to use the remainder of this space here as my home directory. Okay. So what I want to do is now, because it's unallocated, I want to right click and I want to create a new one, a new partition. And I'm going to use the entire um, remainder, essentially is what it is. The only thing I have to do here is change this to X4, which is what I want it, the, the file system, that I want it to be in, in an X4 format. So I'll click Add, then you'll see it puts it in there. Now it does leave a 1 megabyte buffer. There's nothing you can do about this, so just leave it alone. It's not really a lot of space anyway. Okay, so leave that. Now down here, remember I left those 2 gigabytes for the swap file, or those, the, rather the swap part partition. I need to make that into a swap partition, so that unallocated space has to be a new partition. So we're going to do it the same way, new, and then instead of using X4 over here, okay, we want to go to Linux Swap, all right, because we're making it a swap partition, right? So I'll click Add, and now that all of this is basically set up, I can go ahead and hit Apply, all right, and then it will actually write this partition and start moving things out. Uh, and resizing, rather, resizing everything. Now, one quick note. You're going to notice that right here, this 90, 90 megabyte, is really small, partition is in FAT16. What this is, is this is a copy of the boot partition. All right? Technically, you really don't need this. Um, but what I'm, it's, from my experience, just leave it alone. You know, just leave it there. I mean, it's, yeah, 90 megabytes you're not going to be able to use because it will be unused. The boot partition that's going to be used is going to is going to be the one that's on the SD card. This one's not necessary. You could effectively take it out, but for 90 megabytes, I just soon leave it in there. And one of the, and the main reason is that, my God, it takes forever. If you shift and resize to the left, back this direction, okay, um, it's got to now reorganize all the files in there, and it takes forever to do it. It's just not worth it, not for not to gain 90 megabytes. That's my opinion. You do what you want to. But I'm going to leave it right like it is. And uh, one, one of the nice things also, another reason why you might want to leave it there, is this actually gives you an exact copy of what you have on there right now. Um, so if you ever run into an issue, you know, you can copy, you know, this partition directly over to another SD card, and be able to recover that way pretty quickly um, rather than having to recopy the entire um, image again you've already got the uh, the partition um, already here you just copy it over okay so I'm going to click apply and confirm it and it's going to run through and now it's going to start doing its thing it doesn't take very long to do this you'll see it's it's already at what operation now three of four um, yeah, and now it's done. So essentially now what we've done is we've already extended out that uh, operating system partition. It's now larger. Um, we also added a partition um, for our home directory that is considerably lar larger. Um, and we also put in the two, gig two gigabyte, at least for me it was two gigabytes. You can put whatever you want in here. Um, they say that they recommend. They say that if you double the amount of RAM that you have, that's that's enough. Um, I quadrupled it just to be on the safe side. I've got enough space, and quite honestly, 
I want to make sure that there's enough swap space in there for my um, my pie to run as quickly as it can, and hopefully not run into um, issues where it runs out of RAM um, and freezes up on it. But in any case, this is how I've got it set up. So now it's all done. All we have to do now is basically plug this in to the Pi. We want to boot it up, which I'm going to do in the next video. Um, we want to boot it up, and we want to check to see how the Pi sees the external USB drive. Um, that way we know where to point um, the root partition. And you'll, you'll understand that a lot more in the next video because that's that's what, we, well, it's what we're going to cover in the next uh, video or two. I don't know how, how many I'll end up having to do um, for time constraints. But in any case, we're done in here. You can effectively do this. Like I said, you can do this with your SD card. Um, extend it out. You know, if you're using like a 32 or a 64 gigabyte SD card, then yeah, you're definitely going to want to do something like this because you're going to have a whole lot of space you're not even using. And you'll want to set up a swap file, okay? A uh, swap partition, the whole nine yards. All right. So this is essentially ready to go. Um, there's a couple things that you can do in here directly, but like I said, we'll wait until we get the uh, the proper addresses because it really is going to depend on how the Pi sees um, and addresses those partitions um, in its own in its own system. So. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. Um, I'm going to plug everything into my Pi, and we'll get it booted up for the first time and check it out. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to re literally use my DSLR camera and record my screen, <laughs> literally, because I, I won't be able to use the screen capture recorder that I, that I have for this, obviously, because the Pi is not going to have well, anything on it, it's going to be a virgin install. So um, I'll use my DSLR. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing on the screen. I'll try to explain it the best I can. So with that, let's go ahead and kill this video and get on to the next one. We'll see you on the continuation.